What's going on everybody? Fedor here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. And today we are yet again at the Disruptive Ink Studios where I have a lovely Chitty Tech X1 Pro machine right over there. And we are gonna be taking a look what I'm coupling with it. It is the Polymaker Poly Dryer, uh, filament dryer and storage system. And it's actually going to be replacing our fix dry unit right over there. And I'll tell you the pros and cons of each and why I'm choosing to change over to this new system. When Polymaker sent me this, they actually didn't have any kind of requirement whatsoever. They didn't want me to say anything or do anything or post. They just asked for an opinion uh, of mine and I decided to not only give a few of mine uh, while I was using it, but also after about a month or so, I decided to replace uh, my current system here at the office. So the reason why it's here once again is the Chitty Tech X1 Pro has a heater inside of it. We print a lot of ABS, ASA, uh, nylon, things like that uh, here at the office. So what goes really well with that? It's a really good filament dryer and storage system. Let's grab the old one. I'll talk about why I had it here in the first place and why it's going to be replaced. All right, so this right over here is the Figs Dry dual filament dryer right over here. And one of the things that I really liked about it is one, it held two spools or one big spool or one giant spool if you take the top off. I also really liked the fact that uh, you, you can have filament come out of any single space here. Uh, so you're not held back by where the filament comes out of, which is important on a lot of machines, especially those with funky routings uh, for filament. Uh, it does use a standard PTFE tube and you can kind of put it in like this so it doesn't just dangle anywhere. And that is actually one of the things that over use of time I realize is actually a fault. And the reason why I say that is because it's actually really good at drying. Uh, the, 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 the screen is great, the temperature reading is great, it heats up fast, it, it, it does its job. But all the holes and openings, especially the ventilation here, means that after you dry it, you can't just leave it in there. And not only the spool, but the desiccant as well, after just sitting there for even just a few days, just goes back to being wet again, which kind of defeats the purpose of using it. So the, what we had ended up doing is using it to dry and then removing it back or putting it into packaging or containers. And that's kind of the downside of the whole system here is I really liked a lot about it, but that part, the actual using it here part for what I want out of it, it actually started to fail. One of the other things is this is not a hinge top. This just comes right off just like that. If I had one spool in there and I was trying to load another one to prepare for heating it up or whatever it might be, especially if that spool was being used, it would have gotten tugged with the filament spool and just gone all over the place. So once you have one in there and you've chosen which way the filament comes out, you can't really use it. Uh, you have to be really careful at least because the filament tends to, the, the spool tends to fall over, whatever it might be. So the lid that I actually really liked and brought here in the first place would actually happen to be the downside of the machine. One thing I would love to see as an iteration or maybe a modification would be a uh, hinge uh, system so that you can just open this thing and maybe even block up some of these holes with some kind of grommets so that you can actually store filament in there, even though there isn't that much space for desiccant in uh, something like this. So in the design, this was definitely meant to just be a dryer and not so much a storage system. So that's where this new Polymaker system really shines. Let me grab it and show you why. All right, so here's what we have. It is a, it is a modular system, and I know uh, at first this does not seem like much. This seems like the very common uh, style where people buy um, cereal containers like this and modify them to hold spools. However, this has a bunch of tricks up its sleeve. This right here is the poly dryer itself. You can see the plug is on the back here. I just unplugged it and brought it here. And it has an intake and an exhaust and a fan inside and a heating element and it circulates the air. And as you can tell right on the bottom here, when you remove these feet, just like that, that becomes your intake or exhaust. And this just kind of sits right on top of there, just like this, and it becomes your uh, unit, as well as you, you're able to buy more of these, have them as storage, et cetera, et cetera. So that part right off the bat inspired me to check this out a little bit further. I obviously like the hygrometer in here, the desiccant pack. Now, one thing I do wanna say is the desiccant has now changed. I do have a really early model. All right, so some of the other things, let me set this down. Some of the other things that I just really enjoy about this uh, is the fact that uh, there's multiple ways to hold your spool in here. So as you can see on the bottom here, there are 
uh, rollers with bearings, that's one way. So if you have a nice plastic spool, you can just drop it in there, it'll roll, it is all good. Or in the middle here, there is a bar that slots right into these channels that can hold any other spool. So this one, for example, is damaged on the edges, that won't matter, it's not gonna get stuck because it hangs in the center. If you have a smaller spool or a sample, you can also use this. So right off the bat, that portion, the usability portion, is already really improved over the previous system. This is an airtight container, so that is also improved. Then let's check out the PTFE tube. So when you take the PTFE tubes out, there is a rubber grommet that you can close, which means this thing is airtight. It is not gonna let in any kind of moisture or air whatsoever. It also means that you can choose which way the filament comes out of. So, so it might be better uh, going from the top, might be better going from the bottom. You can choose whichever way. This PTFE tube is actually the larger kind, where the smaller PTFE tube can go right in there. And this is just how I store it. So the reason why I don't have it coming out of the top is for the reason why, what I didn't like on that one is, well, when you remove the top here, you can see that the filament is being fed, but it is not interfering with the lid. So I can do whatever I want. I can put more desiccant in there. I can check out how much is in there if I can't see. Whatever I might want to do, it, it is not being hindered by the unit itself. And that is definitely one of my favorite parts about this. Now, there is a couple things that, uh, that I want to note is uh, there is actually a hot side and a cold side uh, to the poly dryer. Let me grab it. And the reason why I wanna mention that is because this uh, LCD screen is actually on the front of the machine or on, of the dryer. And when you wanna match these up, it actually blows the hot air into the back here where the desiccant is not. What I would love to see is uh, that be reversed so that the hot air actually hits the desiccant first, which means that while my filament is being dried, it is also drying the desiccant that's inside here, which means it will last a lot longer and it'll be a better storage solution. Uh, one of the other things that this did not do, for example, be able to dry two units at the same time. And I know that might not be a big deal for some folks, but like I said, we do like to juggle between two or three spools sometimes, and having two would be huge. But here's the thing, this thing is totally modular and I decided to make a modification. Let me grab it. So what I made is this guy right over here and I call this the double barrel mod. And what this does is it rests on top of the original unit just like this. It takes its one single intake and exhaust and well, it gives you two. So now you can have two dryers on top of this thing. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, so here is the double barrel mod. And as you can see, it holds itself really nicely. They fit on there perfectly. And now you have one a poly dryer that is able to heat and dry two units at the same time, the double barrel mod. It was actually uh, first shown off on Joel Telling's channel, the 3D printing nerd, in case for some reason you live under a rock. Just like that. Thanks Joel for showcasing that and linking to the mod. Uh, and I waited a little bit to make the video because I was still checking out how this thing works and functions. And I can say that even though you might, it might take a little bit longer to do two at the same time, after one is dry or two are dry, having both on here is much, much easier to maintain than doing just one. So the double barrel mod is definitely viable and works really, really well. Uh, and it just makes it for a fun system. There's also all sorts of other modifications already for this uh, system. Things like hangers for walls or uh, places to put the little feet that you take off with rubber right on the lid. There's just all sorts of things, so check that out. There's already a growing community for this. Now, it is not necessarily the cheapest dryer and storage system. You can definitely make a do-it-yourself storage system that is cheaper than this, but I do think it is actually fairly priced because of just how useful it is, how modular it is, and all the things that it knocks out of the park over other systems. So definitely check it out in the links below. They are gonna be affiliate links, guys, uh, but you guys know how those work. I, sh I just uh, send you to, to the items, and uh, as a return, I get a small kickback uh, from the manufacturer uh, for gu gu kind of guiding you along the way. There is one more thing that I forgot to mention that I actually don't like, and that is actually the digital readout uh, on the front here. It doesn't actually show you the temperature, and I really wish it did. Uh, what it does show you is a one, two, three, or four power, and that's all you can control. So for PLA, and there's kind of recommendations on it. Let's see if I can remove it from the bottom. 
There we go. For PLA, they say one is fine, PTG, ABS, ASA, TPU is two, and then PA, PC, PVA is three. So, oh yeah, I said it was four power levels, but there's three power levels. So that's just something to consider. If you guys are really into uh, the numbers of these things and you guys want uh, a really specific uh, number, this does not do that. However, it definitely does its job. We've been using it here for a while now. The filament is dry, it prints really great. It's just a pretty cool system. I kind of wish that I had four more of these things just to have all my filament that requires drying that I constantly use uh, sitting in these things. Grab one when you need it, put it by the printer, throw the PTFE tube, it is just a good system, as you can see. A lot less hassle than what I've been using previously. All right, guys, so that's gonna be all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this little showcase of this product. I think it is one of these niche things that does something really, really well and deserves a little bit more spotlight than it already has. Like I mentioned, I do have a really early unit. They did already improve on a bunch of the little things uh, on this on production units, so have no worries there. As well as check out the community. There's a bunch of really cool mods already out there. All right, guys, if you're going to be down in the links, please check out the affiliate links for uh, this if you're interested in purchasing it or at least just checking out for more information. There's also other links down there like Patreon as well where you can support me directly or our free Discord channel where there's like-minded people showcasing their prints, their printer builds, their studios. Uh, everyone's helping each other in the troubleshooting. That's also where you find uh, when the videos drop. There's also specific sections like Patreon or YouTube members specifically. So definitely a fun community there in the uh, in the discord link over there so please go ahead and check that out and join up and as always i'll see you guys in the comments later